I was saying, how did Golan get its name? And I said, well, it was a little town that was never be big enough to be called along, so they left the L off of it. And I says, you don't raise much L in a town this size anyway. Ong, Nebraska, a town located about 90 miles west of Lincoln, once homed 285 people at its peak in 1910. Every decade since the Great Depression has seen Ong's population dwindle down to double digits, now seated at just 63 people. Among them is Gene Anderson, a first-generation Nebraskan who has spent his entire life in Ong, watching it slowly collapse in front of him. We lost a lot of farms and houses in the dirty 30s or after the dirty 30s. And then, oh, up until 65, I would say, we still had a pretty decent community, but it was dwindling then, and it ain't going to get any better. Gene's parents moved from their farm just outside of Ong into the town in 1947, when Gene was 13 years old. Like the rest of Ong at the time, Gene's family faced financial trouble. I graduated in 1952, and uh, Dad was in the vet's hospital in Lincoln, dying of stomach cancer. And Mother didn't want anything to do with the hardware store, so I inherited a hardware store just out of high school. I wasn't even 18 yet then. And uh, it's gone downhill ever since. Other businesses in town, such as the grocery store, suffered a similar fate through the 50s and 60s. The roof went bad on it, and the guy sold out the uh, inventory and turned the building over to the county because <laughs> he didn't want it anymore. And then there's two buildings joined together down there that was a bar and was a bank and was a post office, and now it's nothing. Only two new buildings have been erected since the Depression, one being Gene's house. Even churches were not immune. The guy bought it and took all the steam stained glass windows out and sold them and kind of boarded it up and it's been sitting there ever since. Nor on high school. Guy from Colorado and he was going to make a hunting lodge out of it. And his wife died unexpectedly and he just gave up all hopes and sold her out to another, you know, public auction. And well, I, I can't put out too many good words for Ong because there isn't much left. I personally, I don't see no hope. It's just a matter of time. Nothing else to attract anybody to come in town. If I hadn't had my roots here, I don't suppose I'd have been here either. But you'd have to have something screwy in the head to really, I think, to settle in here now. But. I'm getting bitter as I get old. There's only 15 houses that's livable. We got about another 15 that need to be raised. Made like burnt. <laughs> A lot of the houses that are occupied here are, they've been on disability or something like that. There's, there's very few that live in town here that actually work. But Gene is not one of those people. Having spent his entire life maintaining his family's own businesses, his current home business, Gene's Nut House, is a confectionery ran by him, his son, and his daughter. Gene's family business is the only business operating out of Ong, if you don't count the Grand Elevator. The Anderson family travels in a small school bus 150 miles east and west of Ong to sell English walnuts, pickles, candy, peanuts, and Gene's own prime rib seasoning, the latter of which he plans to make the forefront of his business in the future. We've got a product, if it's promoted right, it's going to sell like hell. But if you do, you know, 
sitting here in a damn wheelchair watching gun smoke every day <laughs> doesn't add to your ambition very much. And I, I'm unable to drive. Had five total knees replaced. One broken femur. I, I'll never walk again. I usually got to have somebody pushing on me to get me in the vehicle. If you fall, if you start from the top, the only way you can go is down. So you got to start from the bottom and work up. For Gene, overcoming adversity is as simple as cracking a nut. I can pretty much get a chuckle out of a lot of people. I said I'm the only guy for a hell of a long ways around here that is over 80 years old and still buys condoms by the thousands. You take a, a filbert or hazelnut and you drill a hole in it and dig the meat out. Well, then you stuff the condom in the meat in the hole and plaster it shut and then kind of stain it so it don't look like it's been manipulated with. Put a little deal on the table you know, genuine rubber nuts. Though Wong's future seems bleak, Gene hopes his family business will outshine it. 